Uh, hello, welcome to the second part of the lecture uh, on the Russian School of Ethnosociology. The first lecture concentrated on the uh, Russian uh, ethnosociologist uh, Sergei Shirakogorov, and this, the second part of the lecture, will concentrate on the Soviet era sociologist, the ethnosociologist Lev Gemilov. Professor Dugan? Now we are going to speak about Lev Gumilov, the famous Russian uh, ethnologist and uh, historian. Uh, first of all, uh, this, this year, uh, the year 2012, is the year of uh, uh, 100 year uh, after the birth of this um, uh, famous uh, historian and um, he has great influence on the uh, Russian culture, uh, on Russian science. Uh, his books uh, were published in the millions uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, our country. So he is universally known in Russia but I think there is very little known in the West. And uh, I think that um, the lack of knowledge of the Lev Gumilov, uh, it is a problem, it is a lost, uh, it is a loss for uh, European and American uh, uh, ethnology, sociology and uh, uh, history because uh, uh, his ideas are, are very important to, to, to know, to be acquainted with, to form uh, the real image or a real picture of Eurasian past because Gumilov were, as a historian, historian was concentrated on the um, nomad uh, empires of the ancient Turks, Mongols, and the other tribes and ethnic groups. So he is really extremely important as uh, 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 one of the mm, mm, most, uh, most uh, important uh, authors uh, that studied uh, the uh, ancient history of Eurasian continent. So, uh, concerning uh, ethno-sociological um, theories of Gumilov, first of all, we need to point out that uh, his teacher was Sharakagorov, and Gumilov uh, was inspired in his ethnological uh, searches uh, by Sherekagorov, and in some way he continued uh, the work of Sherekagorov because uh, Gomilov was the son of two uh, pre revolutionary uh, famous Russian poet, uh, Nikolai Gomilov and Anna Akhmatova. He uh, has received very good education, pre-Soviet education, and uh, possessed a great culture of Russian noblesse, of Russian aristocracy, aristocracy, and for he never was really Soviet. He was, in, he was put in prison for the crimes, so-called crimes committed by uh, his mother, Anna Akhmatova, and, uh, but he never uh, was really Soviet. So he um, followed uh, the studies of different Russian uh, uh, searcher and scientists that were in immigration and was acquainted with uh, a great number of uh, foreign authors in the, this scientific field. So, uh, 
Gomilov was a free, really free man in not so free society, and that was tragic uh, destiny of him. So he was influenced by Sherakogorov, but not, uh, but, but that was that was not permitted, that was not uh, possible to cite uh, the idea of Sherakagorov uh, openly in uh, his epoch. So he developed uh, the ideas of Sherakagorov uh, very rarely citing his name or, or never. The same with Eurasianism, because uh, Gumilev was Eurasianist, one representative of Eurasian movement, but because Eurasianists not were Soviet, were white emigrants living in, in the West, so the direct citations of them also were prohibited. So being Eurasianists and the continuator of the work of Sharakagorov, Gumilov never had the opportunity to confess it openly, because without that he was persecu uh, persecuted by Soviet Marxist communist uh, government. So it was very tragic, uh, his destiny and his life. Uh, uh, in the center of all the uh, researchers of the Lev Gumilov was Ethnos. Ethnos conceived more or less in, this, uh, in the same term as Shirakagorov uh, um, did. So for him, Ethnos, for Gumilov, Ethnos was the basic kind of human society. So he was inclined to consider all the social process as more or less linked to the ethnos. So he interpreted uh, the society in ethnic terms. Development, developing the, uh, the approach of Sherakagor. So uh, uh, on this concept of all-compassing ethnos, he has constructed, constructed his theory of ethnogenesis. Ethnogenesis was uh, the central theory of Lev Gubilov. Here is very important to define uh, how Gubilov understood ethnos. For him, ethnos represented uh, the simplest kind of society, as well as more sophisticated and complex kind of society. In our course of ethno-sociology, we have different name for the same social and historical uh, state of the society. So, in order to understand better the place of Gumilov in the ethno-sociology, we should define uh, differences in the terms. So, for uh, 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 Gumilov, ethnos was cyclical, cyclical uh, phenomenon. So, ethnos is dynamic also, and starting from uh, homeostasis, uh, the Greek, Greek word for define something always equal to itself in the kind of uh, uh, the repetition uh, of uh, the same that fully coincides with our conception of ethnos in the ethnosociology and Shorakagorov's co concept. But Gomilov thought that also there is ethnic phenomenon when this kind of uh, stability is uh, overturned by a, some special moment uh, that Gumilov called passionarity. The uh, passionarity, or in Russian, passionarnost, uh, that was the word 
introduced by Gumilov to uh, to name to give a name to special phenomenon of the end of the stability of social stability of ethnic existence and uh, as a reason of um, of, uh, of uh, growth of the complexity of the society. So the point of the passionarity uh, was considered by him as the growth of the particular types of human. They uh, were uh, they were uh, for him, named by him as, as uh, passionaries, pas passionaries, passionari, passionari. Uh, and uh, this type of human being were more than ethnic. So they uh, were, weren't satisfied with the repetition of the same, of the homeostatic state of the ethnic society and they began all kind of exploits, risky, dangerous exploits in order to, to make something new. That was the end of the ethnos for us in the ethnosociolo ethnosociology and that was beginning of the people uh, or Laos in the Greek as I have explained in the introductory lecture. So, but Gumilov, Lev Gumilov, didn't make the same terminological difference between complex society that we are calling people and ethnic stable society that we are calling ethnos. And he uh, spoke about different stages and phases of ethnogenesis. So first stage of ethnogenesis, according to him, was homeostasis that corresponds totally, fully with our uh, idea of ethnos as such. And after that, after the, the splash, after the flesh of uh, uh, the passionarity uh, that was uh, the growth of, of complif uh, complification, compl complicity, growth of complicity of the social uh, social structure and creation of historical units, states, uh, empires, and uh, mm, and. A social stratificated, uh, a social stratificated uh, kind of society with greater complexity. So uh, 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 Gumilov considered considered that after uh, flesh of uh, uh, the passionarity. Uh, uh, the complexity begins to grow and also uh, it is the, uh, the stage of the growth of the culture, of the state, of the territory, of the um, civilization up to the certain point when this pas uh, passionarity and the quantity of the passionaries, passionari, uh, is uh, um, uh, arrived to the highest point uh, that was called by Humilov by akmetic phase, akmetic phase from the Greek word akme, that is most the highest point of something. So akmetic phase of uh, the growth of the atmos is a kind of uh, full expansion of its potentiality. And after that uh, uh, begins the decline of ethno-structure. The number of passionaries, 
uh, also declined. There came in this, uh, on the scene sub passionaries, sub passionaries, sub sub passionari, according to him, that lack the certain type of uh, of of person that lack a real activity, a real uh, real force and real pos uh, possibility to create something new, but they use that that, that who use the passion uh, passionaries uh, in order to um, to take from them uh, their force and by that usurpation to gain the control o over the masses. So uh, the kind of parasites living on the account of the passionaries. So sub passionari uh, begin to, uh, to grow in the number in this stage of decline. Uh, they uh, pervert the social and cultural system. They cause uh, the confusion of the values and um, uh, after uh, the, um, uh, the catastrophe of Athens in the last stage, it falls anew in a kind of homeostasis. Homeostasis, uh, so a kind of uh, ethnic stage. Gumilev uh, made uh, a picture of different civilization explained by this. Uh, uh, ethnogenetic uh, circle, cycle, and uh, according to him, this cycle lasts more or less for 1,020, 100 years for each civilization, if all the ethnic, ethnogenetic processes are fully manifested, fully developed. In the other case, uh, cases, uh, this development could be stopped by uh, extra, ext extrinsic factors, or by something uh, that, is, uh, that proceeds from uh, outer sources. So, um, uh, it is more or less uh, what is interesting, that uh, comparing uh, Gumilov's theory of ethnogenesis with ethnosociological taxonomy of uh, ethnos and people, people as laos in Greek, we could say that uh, Gumilov consider uh, homeostasis exactly as we uh, are describing the ethnos or ethnic group, as something where uh, all efforts is given uh, to the main goal to conserve the same and to struggle against new. Gumerov uh, proposed uh, a kind of uh, e equation. Uh, passionarity is equal to instinct. That is a formula for the ethnos or homeostasis for him. So, passionarity is equal to grant the uh, survival of the same. It is uh, that give uh, the, the level of personality is exactly the same as needed to reproduce the same. Uh, for Gumilov, it was the formula of homeostasis. Uh, in the phase of Passionarity, the growth of passionarity there in the society, ethnic system for Gumilov, the passionarity is more their instinct. So, in the same human types, in the same human type, uh, uh, is concerned more force that uh, are needed to grant the 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 same the, to reproduce and that is a, a point where uh, is uh, produce something uh, uh, something new something 
accumulated something extra, so um, extra product. And uh, in all senses, in cultural sense, in economic sense, in material sense, and in spiritual sense. So it is a kind of development of the religions, of the society and state structure. In the ethnosociological, ethnosociological taxonomy, to this stage corresponds the stage of people or Laos or traditional society uh, where we are dealing with more complexity, much more complexity than in the case of um, uh, ethnic. Uh, society. And that is a growth of the people, the people uh, going to its ecbatic stage. After arriving to this point begins decline when there are other formula that prevails. Uh, uh, the formula where that um, affirms that passionality is lesser than required for uh, for conservation of the same. So there are subpassionaries, subpassionaries sub that enter the scene and begin to destroy. Uh, the, the society uh, created by passionarity, passionaries, passionaries. So it is a third formula. And after destructive work of this type with uh, particular, particularly for vampiric, we could say, uh, nature, uh, they will be uh, a new. Uh, the, uh, oh, the society, ethnic society, or a kind, a kind of uh, homeostatic society. And that after some period, new passionaries, uh, according to uh, Gomila, from different ethnic, ethnic group, create new, new people, a new historic entity, and all that begins anew. So this kind of interpreting the history as uh, cycles of ethnogenesis is the sense of the theory of Nikolai Gumilov, and he applied this concept to Russian history, to history of Eurasian people, but also to the European and to ancient, to modern, uh, and uh, uh, for, uh, for, for uh, Gumilov, uh, there were different ethnic system in the Russian history, but in the present time, Russia lives uh, uh, just after uh, Akhmatic stage and the beginning of uh, of the decline, but this decline should last for him normally. If it will, uh, it will be, it will develop uh, normally. This decline will last uh, for uh, for um, more or less uh, more or less uh, six uh, hundred years. So uh, it is. Uh, all about uh, 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 Gumilov, but also the, the last uh, thing that we could uh, uh, say about him that he uh, he proposed also the um, original uh, taxonomy based on the type of ethnic systems. Uh, for example, he um, consider uh, 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 the um, simplest form of social organization as consortium. Consortium. Uh, after that, gas 
convixia, convixia, after that sub ethnos, 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 and super ethnos. So for him, all these group were linked to the ethnos and its uh, dynamic and uh, uh, should be uh, considered in the uh, construction of any ethnic system. S sub uh, ethnos, it is a part of ethnic group or tribe. Uh, ethnos is a main category, super ethnos uh, for example, he cons uh, Gumilev considered to be Soviet people as super ethnos or uh, Roman people of Roman Empire super ethnos. And uh, uh, the uh, consortium uh, or convixia were a uh, lesser, lesser form of human association that uh, in some situation could produce according to him, uh, ethnos as such. Uh, for Gumilov, uh, uh, Gumilov pondered on the reason of uh, existence of the phenomena of uh, passionality, because it was uh, uh, regarded by him as something totally, totally different from the ethnic uh, ethnic conditions of living. So it is something transcendental uh, as a, a kind of, uh, of um, inexplainable, inexplainable intrusion on something else, on something alien in the ethnic community. And uh, in short of reasonable and materialist required by the epoch, Ex explanations, uh, Gumilev uh, made appeal to the theory of Chizhevsky, Russian scientist, that tried to explain some social and historic, historical events by uh, uh, different eclipses and uh, flashes on the sun. So uh, it was materialistic way to express a kind of be bewilderness, uh, bewilderness, a, a kind of profound astonishment in front of some historical phenomenon. So uh, nothing uh, uh, could be regarded as sufficient reason for apparition of the uh, passionality. And that, it seems, that it comes from outside. But outside for materialist uh, was the sky or the stars or sun or moon or the moon. But that, that I think that is uh, uh, more uh, the weakest point of Gumilov's theory concerning the links that exist between the, uh, this uh, flash of passionality in the society, in the flesh, in the sun, or uh, drastic uh, changes in the ambience, natural ambience linked to these um, meteorological uh, events. But nevertheless, I think that the fact that he uh, at, uh, at, uh, attract our attention to the phenomenon of passionality and invite us to explore more in this sense, it is uh, very, it is worth of appraisal. So now uh, uh, I am uh, finishing a short observation on the search of, of the sources of uh, uh, Russian ethno uh, sociological, most important Russian sociological, ethno sociological uh, writers. And uh, here, uh, introductory part of a course on ethno 
sociology is finished. Uh, I will evoke more authors and theories in the course of the uh, second uh, part of uh, this course, when I will speak about different kind of uh, ethno-sociological understanding of the types of societies, transformations and uh, other uh, social changes. Okay, uh, the first question that I have, uh, you partially answered right at the end of your discussion, but I thought I'd uh, revisit it uh, simply because um, it is one of the burning concerns of Westerners, uh, sociologists, particularly when they look at uh, uh, Lev Gemilov. Um, they regard his work in history um, and much of his work in sociology as genius. Uh, I think rightly so. Um, but at the same time, he, I think, is somewhat misunderstood in the context of his times. And I think there is a distinction made between that work, which is considered genius, and some of his more, shall we say, controversial ideas that veer off into what in the West would probably be called pseudoscience such as the linking of passionarity with solar energy and solar cycles, the linking of ethnicity with biology and race and so on. So do you think that these ideas were merely developed to support his ideas in what you call a materialist Soviet academic context? Uh, or do you draw some other distinction between these two sides of his work? Thank you for your question. Uh, first of all, I think that uh, we should uh, understand the, the ambience uh, of Soviet Union and there was real pressure on the scientists by the official ideology. So we could not dismiss easily uh, this factor. Uh, so he was obliged not to mention some names it was obvious. Uh, he um, obviously was Eurasianist, but he could uh, confess that only at the end of his life. So he was obliged to to use some some language of materialist uh, ambience, uh, and that, that that is one point. On the other uh, on the other point is that some kind of his interpretation um, of the ethnos and ethnosociological processes uh, could be challenged. I don't think he, he, he should be uh, accepted as something dogmatic. Uh, I think that uh, uh, he could find its very important place in the context of ethnosociology but at the same time, we should not regard him as the last word in the discussion. Uh, so maybe he believed in the uh, sun flashes, as academi ac uh, academician um, uh, Chezhevsky, also that was Russian academician, so kind of um, uh, materialist mythology. So, uh, but maybe not. Maybe uh, he uh, had the other uh, uh, ideas. It is impossible now to know. Uh, at the same time, I think that one point uh, we should uh, insist on is that he never was a racist. Never. He never used the word race and he never suggested that there are some ethnic group that uh, uh, should be considered as superior to the other. He only affirmed always that the, the ethnical groups are different, but it is, that is the very, um, very concept of ethnos, because to be different from one another, they group, uh, we group, as Sumner has put it, so it is necessarily uh, necessary 
uh, aspect of definition of definition of ethnos. So uh, I think that is it is m misunderstanding with Gumilov in the West. And now there are articles in the Western press uh, completely erroneous, completely erroneous, uh, because uh, uh, he wasn't such a person, the image uh, of which we uh, could find uh, in the modern uh, uh, European press. Very kind of caricature, and without knowing uh, his work. For example, in Italy, only one little book is translated. In French, it seems that no one at all. So, uh, but he is author of many uh, more than uh, thirty books of very different quality and very uh, uh, um, um, dedicated to the different subjects. So, I suggest to study Gomelov first, and after that, judge it. Good. Time? Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five all right, um, I'll just uh, bring us a little bit further back on the same line of questioning then. Um, so if we are to take the concept of passionarity and describe it or, or understand it uh, today in the context of all Gumilov's work and uh, in the modern day as a somewhat ununderstandable force of societal, uh, in speaking in the ethnic sense, of will and creativity that propels uh, an ethnicity forward to greatness. Uh, and we describe this as in a, a uh, contradictory to uh, ethnicity as an inherently conservative force. But I then uh, bring up the question of perhaps the great Russian, what we would call in these terms, passionarists. If we take a look at Tolstoy, if we take a look at Dostoevsky, um, these are some of the ideas that we could certainly consider the great people of Russia. But most of these great people of the Russian ethnos or super ethnos have been conservative, considered conservative forces in their own society, both at the time and in history. So is that a little bit of a contradiction? Not at all, I think. But uh, ethnic conservatism is something completely different from the cultural conservatism because with a concert, with a concert, concert, conservatism, we are dealing with, uh, in the case of Tolstoy or Dostoevsky, we are dealing with uh, some uh, highly sophisticated concept of complex society in, in, in a very, com in, in a very uh, with a high level of complexity. So it is a kind of artificial conservatism and. Uh, uh, ethnic conservatism is different, but at the same time, we could, at Gomelov also, uh, evoke that aspect that in uh, he called that in the case of sane passionarity, there is a great deal of conservatism because uh, this kind of passionarity uh, insists on the greatness of, of the whole. In, in this insistence, it is conservation and expansion of the whole that plays part. And that is morbid passionality that is destructive and that is uh, in kind, of, uh, in kind of illness. But uh, worse of all is sub-passionality and the, uh, the, the, the uh, proliferation of the sub passionaries in the Russian society was dramatic reason of our catastrophic social processes. So I think that um, passionaries, the passionaries, conservative or progressive, progressive uh, uh, could be positive for the case of the whole society. And uh, the sub uh they always are morbid and uh, they bear with them the destruction and decadence. I think, um, honestly, that European society or American society uh, is not so much 
uh, today uh, ruled by passionaries, but mostly by sub passionaries. Uh, maybe America, uh, United States is a little bit different because there is a great deal of passionaries there, but they are, as long as I know, misorientated passionaries, um, only in the realm of economic um, power and egoism, but uh, uh, they are uh, um, half road to the sub passionaries, that it may be degradating passionaries. But I, I think that uh, the, the greatness for passionaries, as Gomelov explained, that is the main reason of life, the greatness. For the ethnic group is the conservation of the same. Now, two different goals, two different orientations, and this passion for the greatness, greatness I consider it very important for uh, uh, any kind of the same society. Thank you.